Who's your favorite Boy Meets World character? Sean, Topanga, Eric, Mr. Feeney? Doesn't it bother you that none of these are the actual main character of the show, Corey Matthews? This may be because of how immense of a change his character goes through throughout the show. You know, how can I learn so much every week and still be so stupid? I'll make you stop! Hello everyone, this is Eje and Zeynep. Today we are going to analyze the character development of Boy Meets World's Corey Matthews during the course of the show. A little note, we know that the Boy Meets World spin-off, Girl Meets World, revolved around Corey and Topanga's daughter, Riley, and her best friend, Maya. But we are not going to mention Corey's development regarding Girl Miss World, because even though the creator is the same, the character's development and his future overall doesn't feel organic. Of course, the fact that the show was on Disney Channel may have affected this, but we are only going to consider the seven seasons of Boy Miss World. Season 1 has a very different tone compared to the later seasons. It gives a more childish vibe considering that Corey is only 11 years old. Corey is the middle child of the middle class Matthews family with three children. He has an older brother Eric and a younger sister Morgan. The pilot establishes one of the most important relationships of the show perfectly, which is the relationship between Corey and his neighbor, George Feeney. You know, you're not doing your body any favors loading up on junk like that. Oh, thanks, Mr. Feeney. And please enjoy that high vitamin astronaut drink you're sucking down. He is also Corey's teacher. Of course, having his neighbor as a teacher sometimes creates chaos as seeing each other outside of school brings knowledge about their personal lives with it. In the pilot, while Mr. Feeney is trying to teach the concept of love with Romeo and Juliet during class, What's this, Mr. Matthews? Are you aware that you have detention Friday afternoon? No, actually, I did not know that. Later on, we get to see that Eric ditches Corey as he has a date with a girl, which makes Corey so disappointed that he starts living at the treehouse. This is a very good establishment to their relationship because throughout the first few seasons of the show, we see that Corey is looking for Eric's approval and wants to hang out with him more. But Eric prefers his dates with several other girls over Corey. From the treehouse, Corey gets to see Mr. Feeney eating alone after receiving a call, which leads him to assume that he was also ditched by another woman. In detention, Corey mentions that he doesn't think Mr. Feeney believes in love regarding what happened at yesterday's dinner. We see that Corey is very presumptuous, mostly because he is just 11 years old. This makes Mr. Feeney very angry and he starts lecturing Corey at the very moment, saying love is the driving force of our lives. At the very end, Corey understands that the priorities may change with growing up while he's talking to his mother, Amy, and comes back home. We can say that Mr. Feeney and Corey's relationship is introduced more like an antagonistic relationship at first, but with each episode of learning and absorption of knowledge, this relationship turns into a more respectable relationship between a mentor and a child. Your plant, though immature and undeveloped, has within it the potential to grow and flower with the help of a proper gardener. We also get introduced to Corey's best friend, Sean Hunter. His background is not that much introduced in the season, but we get to see when Corey realizes that Sean has a different background than him. In Santa's Little Helper, Corey learns that Sean's father is laid off from his job, so he decides to give one of his Christmas presents to him, but it backlashes as Sean understands this as if Corey gives him agility and takes off. Here, we see that Corey shoves his present into Sean's face instead of providing emotional support as he doesn't understand how to empathize with him. With the help of Mr. Feeney and his father Ellen, Corey understands the concept of helping without any expectation of getting a thank you back. This is the first episode where we see Corey and Sean having different socio-economical backgrounds. In this season, we also get introduced to the differences in their characteristics. In The Fugitive, Sean blows up a mailbox and tries to hide away at Corey's for a few days. Corey consistently says that he needs to take the responsibility for his actions and turn himself in, but Sean resists until the very last second as he thinks he can never go home again. When Ellen comes in, he tells Corey that he should never be afraid to come home because nothing can be worse than not coming home. We see Ellen trying to provide a safe environment for Corey by telling him that no bad thing he does will make him abandon his child. This is the reason Corey actually suggests Sean that he should tell his father about the incident. 
However, Sham rejects this idea as he doesn't have the kind of support system at home. This is the first time we see the differences in the family dynamics and the parental figures Cory and Sean have. And these differences constitute the consistent development of Cory's friendship with Sean throughout the show. What do you want from me? I want you to come back on my side of the line. How am I supposed to do that? Just go home. In this season, we don't see Cory interacting with girls a lot. This may be explained with Freud's psychosexual stages of development. As Cory is 11, he is technically in the latency period, in which both boys and girls don't show any interest in their sexualities. However, one of the most important people in Cory's life is introduced in this season, Topanga Lawrence. She is introduced as a weird girl that Cory mocks all the time. Topanga? My Cory is always teasing, making fun of her. Oh no, this is bad. In Cory's alternative friends, Cory is paired up with Topanga for a presentation but isn't comfortable with it because she's weird. Later, he hears people mocking his hair and this makes him so self-conscious that he uses hair products to make it better, which he screws up. He therefore joins the outcasts. Even though everybody makes fun of Cory's new hair, Topanga accepts him for who he is and says that there's nothing to make fun of. She even gives him his first kiss at the end when he thinks he looked the worst in his life. This is an important episode for the basis of their relationship. Even though he's not technically interested in her in this episode, near the end of the season, we see that he starts to have feelings for her. In Boy Meets Girl, Sean starts to have feelings for a girl for the first time. In order to keep up with him, Cory asks Topanga out but he gets scared at the last minute and lies about being sick. However, Topanga shows up at his house with a healing tea to make him feel better, and they end up technically having a date at his house. Way to go, Topanga! <laughs> <laughs> Even though he insists that it wasn't a date, we see that he has a good time with Topanga and softens at the end. This episode is actually the basis of Cory's belief that Topanga is the only girl for him, as she was the first girl he started feeling like someone could be interested in him. In season 2, Cory steps into high school, thus the bullying and the fear of not fitting in starts. There are just a lot of episodes in this season about his fear of not being liked by any girl and that he'll be lonely. In pairing off, he sees everyone pairing with someone else and thinks he shouldn't be single to fit in. The first person he thinks of is Topanga, the girl he has known since he was very little. Even though he saw her as a weirdo last year, he starts seeing her as a more ordinary girl. But Topanga friend zones him, so he starts looking for other options and dates with two girls, Theresa and Wendy. The thing these two girls have in common is that they both get clingy too fast and start thinking seriously about their relationship with Cory. He says no multiple times to Theresa and she's really harassing him but he can't leave her because he's afraid of the school bully. And he is warned by Sean and his father about Wendy as soon as she starts having dreams about how many children they'll have in the future. These two relationships are important to consider. As Cory behaves in a similar way these two girls did when it comes to his relationship with Topanga in the upcoming seasons. Sean's impact on how Cory looks at relationships also can't be neglected. He is more of a playboy and changes his girlfriends too fast when Cory thinks he barely gets anyone's attention. In The Uninvited, for first time, Cory is invited to a party by an attractive girl and Sean isn't, so he feels cool for the first time in high school. But when he arrives, he learns that it was actually the geek party, and his confidence is shattered again. Cory then goes to Chubby's and sees Sean there in the cool party. Seeing Cory isn't happy about what happened, he suggests they leave the party. You don't think I'm a geek? Of course not. You think I'm cool? Of course not. Then what am I? You're Cory. I'm Sean. Just like it's always been. What else do you need to know? Even though they seem to accept their differences and continue being friends as they are, these differences come up so frequently. In Wrong Side of Tracks, we see for the first time that Sean's reputation is actually not that good amongst the girls, being talked about how poor he is. When Sean is so torn by this and believes that he and Corey aren't the people of the same world, he starts hanging out with the thugs of the school. 
Corey tries to take Sean to his side and not let him pull himself to a life he doesn't deserve to live. Do you have a friend who thinks so much of you that he's willing to put his own neck on the line? No, I don't think lowlifes have friends like that, do you? This is the second time Corey is trying to prevent Sean from making a big mistake and screwing up his life, which becomes a big pattern he follows later on. Struggling with learning the meaning of life, he adopts the role of pulling Sean to the bright side and makes it a big part of himself. Sometimes people can push you away just when they need you the most. And he must really need me. Maybe he does. In season 3, we see a big change in Corey's perspective on romantic relationships. In the first episode, the first thing he thinks after returning to school is asking Topanga out. The girl he made fun of and never felt self-conscious near is now the perfect woman and he feels so inferior. If I had to dream up the perfect woman, she wouldn't even come close to you. Once they start dating, he blurts out I love you to Topanga very soon and she is afraid of how fast Cory is going that she runs away from him. Then, Cory talks to her about how she cut him off with no explanation when he put his heart out. He also adds, All I know is you and I belong together. And Topanga reciprocates by saying I love you back. Six episodes later, in The Last Temptation of Cory, when Topanga becomes sick, he goes to a party a girl invited him to. The girl kisses him and he doesn't pull back. The girl even keeps kissing him when he is on the phone with Topanga saying everything is okay. When he later tells this to her, she says this should never happen again. This is the first breaking point in their relationship and we can say that the trusty ship is broken at the very early stage. Three episodes later, in The Grass is Always Greener, Cory feels kind of bored in his relationship and goes to a party, impersonating Sean and he feels so cool. In the party, he also sees Topanga impersonating a French girl and flirting with a lot of guys. Then they realize that they are at a crutch and decide to break up. Being 15 year olds, as they have skipped years in the show, this is actually natural because at that stage, adolescents spend time having fun in relationships and settling down can seem boring. The problem is that he decided that they belong together at a very early stage in their relationship but he was also the one that elicited behavior to break down the relationship. In the happiest show on earth, as Cory realizes he still wants to be with Topanga, he chases her to Walt Disney World to tell her how he feels. She rejects him multiple times and just when he gives up, Topanga understands how much Cory loves her and decides to get back together. What are we doing? We did break up for a reason, right? And that reason was... So we could get back together. This creates the illusion in Cory's mind that there's no limits to how much he can do to get together with Topanga and no matter what he does, they will always end up together. This makes him dependent on the relationship so much that he never breaks up, even when he is supposed to, and rather flirts with other people but comes back to his comfort zone. He wants Topanga to accept all of his flaws and be loving to him no matter what. This is something a person would expect from his parents. And knowing how loving and accepting Amy and Ellen are towards him, it perfectly explains what kind of meaning he puts on his romantic relationships, the thing he found so hard to form when everyone was being paired off around him. In the season finale Brother Brother, Corey is finally reacting to all the indifference Eric had towards him. This relationship was invisible for a long time, but when Eric is finally moving out from their room because he's going to a summer tour and college, instead of communicating and dealing with his feelings, Cory picks up a really meaningless fight. This behavior goes on with him for a long time because this makes it easier to part with someone he cares about and he uses his anger to suppress his other feelings. In Eric's farewell party, he talks in front of everyone. To my brother Eric who's moving out, and not just for four years, probably forever. And I don't even know him, and now I probably never will. He is so embarrassed by this that he leaves the house early the next day not to say goodbye. Eric goes to him and learns he is rejected from college. Cory supports him to still go on the trip and Eric then invites Cory to join him. This is important because in season 4, Eric starts spending more time with Cory and tries to give him more emotional support when he needs it. Yet, in season 7, we see their dynamic reversing. In season 7 episode Brotherly Show, Amy and Ellen want Corey and Eric to clean out the garage. 
Corey goes down there with Sean and Topanga, looking at all their memories and they start goofing around, when Eric walks in upset. Corey apologizes, yet Eric ignores and suggests that they sell all their memories and split the money in half. During the sale, Corey gets into a fight, Eric beats the man who attacked him, and they find themselves in the hospital. Eric then expresses that he is angry with him. Look, it's not about the garage, okay? It's about the fact that you shut me out of your life a long time ago. That's not true. Dad wanted us to do that together and you chose to leave me out. Those are our memories! Talking to Topanga, Cory says that they aren't kids anymore and are completely different people now. But Topanga says it's not too late to make new memories if he wants to. This is an important point because the opposite situation happened in season 3. For years, Eric didn't want to spend time with Cory and preferred other people over him, so Cory learned not to expect much from him. Even though Cory isn't too wrong forming a new life for himself, he may have tried to understand Eric and communicate with him openly. But we know Cory is never good at expressing his feelings and rather than this, he gives meaningless apologies to fix his relationships, which we see more in the other seasons too. In season 4, we see another bump in the Cory Topanga relationship surface. In A Long Walk to Pittsburgh, Cory learns that Topanga is moving to Pittsburgh with her parents. When she comes to say goodbye to Cory, he still doesn't believe it is happening and refuses to bid farewell to her. No, you're not moving because we're supposed to be together like we've always talked about, so you can't move because we don't deserve that kind of pain. Cory, will you just give me a hug and a kiss and say goodbye to me? No. And she leaves for real. He later regrets that he didn't say goodbye, but we see a similar behavior of him running away from the hard situations he has to go through with the people he loves. Later, Topanga runs away from Pittsburgh to Cory, saying her parents can't separate them. Cory is even standing up to his parents when they say they have to inform her parents about Topanga being at their house. He defends that they want to separate Cory and Topanga when they are just doing the responsible thing. The intense feelings Cory has towards Topanga is even impacting Topanga's feelings so much that she starts to feel like they are going to be together forever, like he says, even though she's normally the rational one in their relationship. In the season finale, Cory goes to a college visit accompanying Eric, and Topanga doesn't come because her aunt doesn't allow her to spend the night. Later we learn it's a lie and it makes Cory angry because he thought something would happen between them on the trip. And when another girl wants to have sex with Corey, he can't say no. For a note, the scene feels like sexual harassment to us. We feel like Corey gives a lot of signals that he doesn't want to have sex with the girl, but she ignores it. Corey feels like he has to say yes when one wants to have sex with him, and he has no chance of saying no, because that's how men are wired. But the way it's interpreted in the show, it was like Cory was okay to have sex with another person just because Topanga didn't want it with him yet. As Eric walks in, he figures Cory was going to cheat on Topanga with the girl and Cory doesn't say that he was being forced. So we are going to take the scene as Cory cheating on Topanga and how he is always hesitating about his relationship whenever it's mentioned that she doesn't want to have sex until they are married. This can normally be a reason to break up if one's needs doesn't meet the other's preferences. But Cory prefers cheating over breaking up with Topanga, always keeping the safe relationship near rather than doing the right and respectful thing. Listen, I know things are going to happen between us when they're supposed to happen. And I know I'll wait until they do. Best things in life are worth waiting for. <laughs> yeah, right! Even though Sean and Corey's relationship wasn't in the spotlight in season 3, because Mr. Turner and Sean's relationship was being built, this season we see Corey again trying too hard to always make things right for Sean. In cult fiction, when Mr. Turner talks to Sean about college and spending some effort in school, a girl approaches him and invites him to a place called The Center, which we later learn is a cult. Even though Sean is a bit hesitant at first, he gets drawn to it pretty quickly. And when Corey realizes what he is in, he wants to go see The Center and later thinks their leader is a slick person. Yet, Sean points out why he is drawn to the cult. What do you believe in, Corey? Do you believe in a mother and a father? And a comfortable yeah. house and a comfortable street? Because that's what you have? Well, I don't have that. So I found something with these people. The cult leader doesn't try to take Corey in because he knows Corey has a good family and support system, and they can't easily influence him. 
Later, when Mr. Turner gets in a motorcycle accident and Sean tries to run away from dealing with this, Corey tries to make him confront reality and see the real love they have for him, unlike the cult he trusts on. This is a hug, okay? This is a hug. And this is when you hug somebody, when you care about them, and you want them to know that. This was again one of the biggest mistakes Sean would have made to screw up his life, yet Corey tries to do everything he can to prevent this, being his family and support system to save Sean. In season 5, there is an addition to Sean's life, his stepbrother Jack. In the episode Boy Meets Real World, Corey films a documentary about Jack, Sean and Eric's roommate lives. He is caught up so much in the documentary making that at some point, he doesn't care if Sean and Jack are fighting. Later, he tries to help them make up. This is really similar to his behavior in the episode The Pink Flamingo Kid from season 3, where he was so hyped about making a documentary that even though Sean told him he didn't want Corey to film his trailer park and the crimes there, he didn't listen to him until he got into trouble. We can see that he can sometimes be caught up in his selfish purposes and not care about anything going around him and always tries to fix it later on. He also is so controlling of Sean's life sometimes, probably because of the power he feels because he is always the one fixing his life. In Things Change, when Sean only gets into the waiting list of Pembroke, he convinces other students who got accepted not to go so that Pembroke will take Sean. This is how controlling he can be so that nothing in his life will change, creating a bubble to live in. In this season, Corey's most complicated relationship is with Topanga. In the episode A Very Topanga Christmas, we see for the first time that Topanga coming from a different family and traditions affect Corey really intensely. He dreams of Mr. Feeney showing him the future, Topanga being married to Jack, making compromises that she didn't do when she was with Corey. Mr. Feeney says a relationship needs compromises to last. Corey accepts that at the end of the episode and they give each other promise rings. It's important that even though there are compromises to be made in relationships, Topanga forces her own traditions on Corey the whole episode and it's actually normal it makes Corey uncomfortable that she's trying to control his family's traditions as a guest at their house, so it's a bit different than compromising. And that's the dynamic of their relationship. Even though Topanga seems so controlling, Cory never frankly expresses he doesn't like it and picks up stupid fights, missing the core problem every time. This is a build up to the biggest breaking point in their relationship. In the episode Heartbreak Cory, they go on a school skiing trip as a class and Cory dreams of switching rooms and sleeping with Topanga at the end of the night. But Topanga doesn't want this. He hurts his ankle and stays inside instead of skiing, where he meets Lauren, who works at the ski lodge. He spends his time talking with her for the day and the whole night. Even though his ankle feels better the next day, he lies to Topanga to stay inside. He tells Lauren that he can't like any girl other than Topanga, and then... I wasn't expecting you, but sometimes people take you by surprise. Surprise. Even though he has real feelings for another girl for the first time, he feels like he can't have that kind of a feeling because he has a safe planned future. He sees more stability with someone he has known his whole life and exploring his feelings with new people feels dangerous. If it fails, he has to take responsibility for leaving something safe for an adventure and as a pattern, we know he is very bad at this in his romantic relationship with Topanga. He later confesses to Topanga that he talked all night with Lauren but lies about their kiss. He takes Lauren's letter too but then drops it which Topanga sees and reads, learning that they kissed and Lauren felt really intimately about Corey. She later says that he should think about his feelings if he isn't sure. Then Corey enjoys his date with Lauren and is really scared that he does. When he is comparing the two girls on which one he should be with, the only thing that makes Topanga win is that I like Lauren. I like spending time with her, but I can live without her. I can't live without Topanga. He believes this because at every stage of his life, Topanga was there and he knows no way to live with Topanga completely missing in his life. This belief can normally change with effort, but Cory never takes any risks and keeps himself from trying another pathway where he can be happy in a different form. In Starry Night, 
they get back together and once again, it's confirmed in Corey's mind that Topanga will accept Corey despite everything he does in real life. In season 6, Corey gets into college with his friends. But a more important turning point for Corey is the marriage proposal he got from Topanga at the end of season 5. In his answer, at first, he acts more logically by not directly accepting her proposal because he thinks Rushing into marriage right now is, is way too overwhelming, what with high school ending, college starting. However, in a very short period of time, with Sean's encouragement, he decides to accept this and talk to his parents. When they reject the idea, Corey and Topanga just run away to elope, which they are not able to do as Topanga can't say yes at the altar. Here, we can see that Corey actually has a bit of logic that is left inside him. But considering every other person's point of view, such as Topanga's will to marry and Sean's thoughts, he quickly suppresses that part of his mind and accepts the proposal directly. However, he can't even take responsibility for his actions that he argues with his parents and just runs away as a solution. The most important thing to consider here is that they don't get married because Topanga can't say yes not Corey. It's as if only Topanga can determine the future of their relationship, because Corey's okay with everything she does. Fresh out of high school, don't know anything about the world at all. I'm sorry, I can't do this. This is a mistake, and I do not support it. Why couldn't you have just gone to Yale? This is again an indication of him not wanting to take responsibility for any of his actions, so he lets other people make the final decisions. This also makes him so insecure of his relationship. In Hugs and Kisses, Corey gets jealous of Sean and Topanga as they have to kiss for the Pembroke University's commercial and gets crazy about this for the whole episode. It happened and they felt something. How do you know? Because you can't do something like that without feeling anything. This is an expression learned from experience. In fact, he does projection on this kiss considering his kiss with Lauren. Even though Corey said when he kissed Lauren, Her kiss meant nothing to me. In moments like this, we get to see that he actually had feelings for her. This actually shows his distrust towards the situation comes from his distrust he has towards himself. And he wants this relationship to be his safest place. Thus, he has extreme unrealistic expectations, which come to surface in extreme situations. In Resurrection, Amy gets into labor and gives premature birth to Corey's brother, Joshua. However, as this is the same day as Valentine's Day, he only cares about celebrating their first Valentine's Day with Topanga after their breakup last year, and he doesn't even care about his brother. He uses his relationship to escape from reality, which causes him to create an unrealistic fantasy. I want you to make everything better. How do I do that? Just be here with me sitting right next to you. I know, but I, I don't feel like you are. Now I want us to be Corey and Topanga again, because then everything is okay. I don't like it when you use us to hide from the rest of life, Corey. When Topanga points this out, he says that he cannot recognize this new Topanga anymore, which is actually called growing up. But he has a strong resistance towards growing up. And this actually opposes his perspective towards his relationship as he is planning to marry Topanga which is actually a very mature thing to do. Therefore, we can see that he has an internal conflict that he cannot resolve, causing inconsistencies in his actions. These inconsistencies also reflect on his ideas on getting married. In the psychotic episode, Corey starts having consistent dreams about killing Sean. As this irritates him so much, he tells this to Mr. Feeney, and Mr. Feeney says this is about Corey holding a grudge towards Sean because of the pain he caused him throughout his rough life. Mr. Feeney says that if Corey forgives Sean, everything will be okay. He decides to forgive Sean, but the dreams repeat. We then learn that this advice was given in Corey's dream. So, we actually see that Corey feels like Sean projects his pain onto him, which makes his life harder, and this creates an anger inside him. Even though this is not the real meaning of the dream, Dream Feeney's advice points out the basis of Corey and Sean's friendship. That is mostly about Sean making a huge mistake and Corey tidying everything up, which is actually a big burden on Corey at times. Then, he takes real Feeney's advice and realizes that he never finished the dream. When he sleeps again, he sees the elevator shaft dream in which, starting with Sean, he kills his friend Zeneric. At the end, Lauren pops up all of a sudden. What are you doing here? I'm, I'm over you. You shouldn't be here. I'm not Lauren. I'm everything you're giving up. The life you will never have. Bye, Corey. Wait! She is the only person that Corey calls back shouting. Afterwards, Topanga appears in a wedding dress, and Corey says that he killed everyone for Topanga and him. He then wakes up disappointed. 
but Topanga doesn't even notice this. However, Sean understands something is up. Even this shows how unaware Cory and Topanga are of each other. This is actually the second time we see that Cory has anti-marriage feelings. First time being the time Topanga proposed to him, but he brushes this off very quickly. It's as if Cory never listens to his inner voice and does whatever he thinks he needs to do to keep this relationship, which is mostly saying okay to everything Topanga says. In this season, we also see his averageness is bothering him so much. This was brought up before too. In season 3 episode, Hometown Hero, he put off the fire he started in the first place in the school, but was announced as a hero, a reputation he couldn't give up because he thought he was a nobody in the school without it. This is related to how much he cares what other people think of him, and the last thing he wants to be is boring. In the season 6 episode, Better Than Average Corey, he feels a bit of an inferiority complex when he meets a professional artist who is younger than him. He starts feeling like there's nothing that separates him from anyone else and blames this on his parents. Yet we know from prior episodes that they tried to make him explore options by sending him to camps when he was young, but every time he expressed dissatisfaction. Ellen later explains to Corey with fury, To me, average was a dream. That's why my father worked his butt off so maybe his son could have something more. And I was proud of him and he would have been proud of me too. But I'm sorry that you're not proud of him me and of yourself. Here we see that Corey yet again isn't taking any responsibility on who he has become and trying to find a target to put the blame on. Season 7 doesn't start off well for Corey because as Topanga's parents are getting divorced, her belief in love is shattered. Corey goes to her mom and dad to convince them to get back together. Later learning that the reason they are getting divorced is because Topanga's dad cheated on her mom. This is the first moment Cory believes that love can die someday and accepts that he can't be with Topanga forever if she doesn't want to. In no such thing as a sure thing, Topanga learns that her dad cheated on her mom and tells she hates her dad and doesn't believe in love anymore. But her mom tells her that Cory and his dad aren't the same people and she can't just give up on what she has now for a possibility something bad can happen in the future. Just when Cory is again convinced that they are saying goodbye to each other. You mean everything to me. Because you and I, we're never going to be together again. I want to be with you forever. But it's okay. I'm ready to move on. I love you. I want to be your wife. So I guess you and I are officially over. If something bad happens to us someday, it could never change what we have now. Love is real and we have to do everything we can to keep it alive. This parallels what happened in Disney World in Season 3. It takes so much time for Cory to accept that they broke up because he is really stubborn. But when it finally sinks in, Topanga wants to get back together. This makes his relationship with Topanga last forever, of course. They get married three episodes later and after the honeymoon, that's when the real life problems start. And the honeymoon is over, Cory and Topanga think for the first time where they are going to stay, being a married couple. They can't stay with Rachel and Angela in the apartment because Sean has moved in and his parents don't allow them to stay at their house, so they go to the married dorm of their university, which is a really bad place. Later, Cory finds a beautiful but really expensive house and goes to his parents for them to sign off a contract that they will pay for the house if Cory and Topanga can't. They refuse this again. I can't help you the way you want me to and I'm not going to. It, it, it's just hard, Dad. You made a choice. You decided that you were old enough to get married. You decided to take on the responsibility of a new life because you believed you could handle it. And this family supported that decision after we told you that it was going to be very difficult. Did you go into this marriage thinking you were just going to play house and we were going to bail you out of trouble? Deal with your life. Cory later gives an effort to fix a pipe in their dorm and actually succeeds. He shows this to his dad's face, but this was what Ellen actually wanted Cory to do all along. This is the first time Cory sees that his love for Topanga can't cut him off from reality. He can't just trust his parents for something they didn't really support all along and marriage is hard work. This whole time, his love for Topanga was an illusion that he created, believing everything would be okay when they were together but for the first time, the problem comes with it. However, he doesn't bail out on this and makes an effort to improve the house because his parents won't help him. 
their marriage problems don't end of course. In The Provider, we see Cory trying to sell magazines over the phone and he's not doing well. Then Topanga comes in saying she got a job as a fashion magazine assistant and got promoted so quickly and immediately sells one magazine over the phone unlike Cory. This bothers Cory so much because he feels like he's failing and Topanga at the same time is showing her successes in his face. When he refuses to talk to Topanga about this, she pushes him further and they have their first big fight as a married couple. You, you shove your stupid grades in my face or how you get promoted or, or, or you sell one of my subscriptions. Maybe I have to kiss Judy's tushy because you can't sell one stinking magazine. Well, I used to be able to do a lot of things before I married you. You've killed my spirit. Cory later apologizes but Topanga is still mad so she doesn't say it back and Cory loses his temper again. They fight for a really long time. I'm, I'm sorry about what happened. Uh-huh. Topanga, I, I, I just apologized. Now it's your turn? No, that's not the way it works. What, I get into Pembroke, you get into Yale. I didn't go because of you. I understand that, Topanga, believe me. That's all part of this. Topanga, I, I understand that you're better than me. Why do you have to shove it in my face? I, I, you make me not think very much of myself. Even though they reconcile at the end, the things he said are pointing at the major problems of their relationship. As far as it goes, Sean always convinced Cory that he could never do better than Topanga. Cory, a guy can do no better than Topanga Lawrence. Yeah, I know that. This belief is the one that drives Cory to make his relationship last no matter what. This is also why he is always interested in other girls when he is with Topanga, because whenever other girl gets interested in him, he believes that other girls can like him too, so he has an appeal. So whenever he gets back to Topanga, these feelings come back to him. This is a big fight and these days this could be a huge breakpoint in a relationship, even for a married couple. Yet, it's incredible that their relationship improves after this fight, which kind of has to happen if they aren't splitting. The problems they face are more adult problems and they have to make more compromises to make it last. In the finale, Topanga gets an internship offer in New York but rejects it. Upon talking to Mr. Feeney, Cory learns that she didn't turn it down because they already have a life in Philadelphia, but because she's afraid to take the risk of being unsuccessful, just like how scared she was of going to Yale. Now, Topanga always thrived here. I, I think she'd be successful anywhere. Do you believe that? Yeah, of course I do. Does she? What? Did you know that before she decided not to go to Yale, she came to my office to talk to me? Right, she, she didn't want to go to Yale because of me. When I pulled the flower out of the small pot in my living room, it resisted a little, you know. I had to force it out because I thought if I left it there, it would stop growing. Cory then supports Topanga and they decide to move to New York. This kind of proves how he has started to think for the two of them, not only himself, upon marrying Topanga and getting closer. This season is also a breakthrough for Sean and Cory's relationship because the more invested Cory gets into Topanga, the more his relationship with Sean changes. Even though the episode It's About Time is about Cory and Topanga getting married, the focus is more on Cory and Sean's relationship. Cory acts so bossy and Sean is so upset that Cory doesn't understand how hard this day is for Sean too. He continues acting so bossy and at last, Sean gives up on being the best man. He arrives at the wedding late and tells Cory to apologize later and this makes Cory go mad in front of everyone. I shouldn't have even come here. Have a wonderful yes. life, jerk. Yes. You too, trailer trash! And we're not gonna be ah! friends anymore! Why do you keep saying that, huh? You won't talk about it! I don't it. wanna talk about it! Why do you think I've been sending you everywhere? We have to talk about it! I don't want to! This is an important point because Cory was again avoiding the talk and was picking up meaningless fights until eventually he had to talk about it. It actually shows beforehand that things change upon getting married and the most important person in Cory's life is going to be Topanga now. This wedding's been kind of hard for me because I know no matter how much we may avoid talking about it, Cory and I both know that we're not going to be best friends anymore. And that's the way it should be. So this is to Topanga, Cory's wife. 
a new best friend. We know we didn't mention Ellen, Amy and Mr. Feeney so much in the later seasons, but this is because after season one, there aren't too many episodes devoted to their relationship with Corey, and the lessons they give are dispersed in other situations Corey finds himself in. This actually makes sense, because as we grow up, especially during puberty, we care less about what grown-ups say to us and want to learn things with experience. And it takes time for adolescents to understand the valuable lessons given to them by their parents and teacher figures. Yet, they still have very important places in Corey's life throughout all seasons. Corey Matthews isn't the most beloved character in Boy Miss World, but he is the one we watch grow up and learn lessons with. His character changes so much throughout these seasons, but we actually see how that happens with layers. This even shows no matter how healthy and stable one's home environment may be, this may lead to one's search for extremity in life. In Corey's example, Sean has a really unbalanced life and Corey never lets him go of his life. And his relationship with Topenga is a roller coaster, and he even marries her at a very young age, which is not an ordinary thing to do at all. So this means no matter how we are treated by our environment, we are responsible for who we become in the end. How do you think Cory would turn out if he didn't have this unstable stable relationship with Topenga and they never got married? What would happen if he wasn't best friends forever with Sean? Comment your thoughts below. Thank you all for watching. We hope you liked your analysis. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you in the next videos. Bye!